got to talk about Stacey Abrams, Brian Kemp, voter suppression, and the new Black Panther Party. Now, I know some of you may be kind of figuring in your mind how this is all related, but I'll explain. Now, I know you've seen the thumbnail of this video. I know you've seen this picture on the internet. So you've seen it somewhere before today, most likely. What's going on here is that you have the new Black Panther Party out there somewhere by Atlanta or in Atlanta itself protesting against so-called voter suppression and they're trying to rally in favor of Stacey Abrams. Now, <laughs> this is really just an ironic picture because first of all, you guys that are out there with your weapons don't understand that Stacey Abrams may not really be on your side. Before I get into all the ways this is kind of ironic and how they probably should be supporting Brian Kemp rather than Stacey Abrams and how this whole issue of voter suppression is not really real, let's get into a video of Miss Stacey Abrams herself talking about guns and what her policy would be going forward if she were to become governor of Georgia rather than Brian Kemp, her conservative opponent. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Let's talk about gun policy. When you were a state lawmaker in 2016, you co-sponsored a bill that would have allowed Georgia state authorities to take away so-called assault weapons from current gun owners. Most similar bans would grandfather in existing uh, weapons of that sort, semi-automatic rifles that are called uh, assault weapons. So is that your current position, that law-abiding gun owners in Georgia should have to give up those weapons if authorities deem it necessary? In the state of Georgia, you introduced legislation to start conversations. I am happy to work with the legislature to figure out how we make an assault weapons ban work. But what I fundamentally believe is that we have to have common sense gun safety legislation. I am someone who supports the Second Amendment, who knows how to shoot, who knows how to hunt. But I believe that our responsibility is to make certain that the most vulnerable in our society do not face those who are irresponsible with their weapons. AR-15s are not necessary on our streets. Semi-automatic weapons have to be put under a certain level of responsible control. And I believe as the next governor of Georgia, I can work with Democrats and Republicans to come up with common sense gun safety legislation that will allow us to make our families and our community safer. Well, just to be clear, you were one of six co-sponsors of this bill, a House yes. Bill 731 introduced January 11, 2016, not that long right. ago. Your co-sponsor told reporters the law, quote, would require gun owners of these particular models to turn their guns in. And again, my, my point is this, the legislation introduced was the beginning of a conversation. I am absolutely certain that with, were we to pass this in Georgia, we would have a conversation about grandfathering in, about whether or not people would turn their, their guns in, whether there would be buybacks. There are a number of approaches to take to accomplish this goal, but the fundamental responsibility is common sense gun safety legislation in Georgia, making sure we get dangerous weapons off the streets and that responsible gun owners stand together to hold those who are irresponsible accountable and we reduce the risk of harm to the rest of Georgia. Well, just to be clear though, I'm just trying to understand. So you, yes. you don't support the actual legislation, you just support having a conversation about it? No, what I've said is, legislation in the state legislature is about starting the conversation. Very few pieces of legislation are introduced and come out the same way they go in. That's the process of making the law. My mission in 2016 was to be a part of the conversation. I believe that we have to ban assault weapons in the state of Georgia. I believe that we have to ban assault weapons in the state of Georgia. I believe that we have to ban assault weapons in the state of Georgia. But what I'm saying is, as part of my leadership, I'm gonna work across the aisle and we're gonna have a conversation about how we accomplish. Okay, so you saw that. You see what's going on. Now, she's talking about, oh, I know how to hunt. I know how to shoot. Well, if you know how to hunt, you know how to shoot, you know that semi-automatic does not really mean anything other than that's how the ammunition is set into the weapon rather than just, you know, having a musket or something like that. You slap in the magazine and you can just fire as quickly as your finger could pull a trigger. It's not about, or you could just push the trigger and the bullet spray. That is a machine gun. Those are not legal for you to get. Well, it's kind of legal for you to get, but you can't just go to the gun store and buy one of those. Like you, you can't just go to Bob's gun store in the corner and just get a machine gun. You have to go through a bunch of hoops. You got to contact the federal government. You got to pay a large amount of money, more than most people will be able to have. You're not really going to be able to get a fully automatic in the USA as a civilian. You're going to have a semi-automatic handguns, rifles. They're pretty much all the same as far as that mechanic is concerned. Now, you saw those guns these guys had. 
these guns could be considered so-called assault weapons. There's a definition of assault weapon. If I could find that, I'll place that on the screen. In this definition, they're talking about how the gun looks. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, hold on. So we're going to define a weapon as being of the assault class by looking a certain way. You now, you can have a rifle that does the exact same thing as a different one, but the one that is considered assault just happens to look scary. So you're going to ban that one rather than the other one. It's, it's really crazy because at the end of the day, they do the same thing. The bullets still come out pretty much the same. The so-called assault weapon may just have certain things on it and make it a little bit easier to maneuver in your hands. Not going to be any kind of bump stock or anything like that, which is really a piece of garbage thing. That's not even really what they're talking about when they say assault weapons. But to get back to the new Black Panther guys, don't you guys realize that she may try to take your weapons you want to be out there exercising Second Amendment rights to have these kind of weapons, but she does not really feel the same way that you do. Matter of fact, you should be on Brian Kemp's side. We'll get to the whole voter suppression thing in a little bit, but you should be on Brian Kemp's side. He put out a commercial where he was in his living room or something talking to a potential shooter of one of his daughters. That was the premise of the commercial. And we've all seen come prom time, you have dads on social media pointing a gun at the um, the potential date or in a direction of them. And two things, if you're going to date one of my daughters. Respect. And? A healthy appreciation for the Second Amendment, sir. We're going to get along just fine. That's just to let you know that, hey, don't do anything wild or crazy to my daughter. I have a weapon. She's protected. That's all that it means. And that's what Brian Kent was showing in the commercial. You guys have weapons just like he has weapons. You guys want to have them just like he wants to have them. Why not be on his side? Stacey Abrams is against you. Not only did she come out on TV and say that you might have your weapons taken away. She also had a commercial where she was talking about Brian Kemp's ad saying who does that as far as having the gun pointed at the boy guns aren't toys i understand but we all as regular everyday human beings in america understand what the purpose of the commercial was so again you guys a new black panther party should be on brian kemp's side now to get to this whole issue of voter suppression the black panther party or this particular group of them put out a statement about this and i'll place that on the screen but basically they're saying Thousands of people won't have their voice heard this election because of voter suppression tactics. Um, I'm reading articles on the root.com. Y'all pretty much know how crazy they are on the left. They're talking about, you know, this whole exact match rule that Brian Kent was involved with in his current role as secretary of state in Georgia. They're saying that somehow uh, a voter suppression tactic is crazy. The whole exact match rule means that your voter registration may be null and void or thrown away if you have certain things that do not match your DMV records. You know, if your name isn't the same name on your voter registration as it is in DMV, if there's a certain apostrophe or whatever missing, that can be discarded. And the reason for that is because they're trying to protect your right to vote, not eliminate it, because people engage in identity theft. This is a real thing that goes on all over the nation. Not just with voting, but also with credit, with a lot of different things, job applications. Identity theft is a real thing. It's happening right now in Georgia a lot. Florida, a lot of these places, it goes on. So why not have something in there that could really fight against it, especially when it comes to voting, because voting is your right as a U.S. citizen. You have the right to vote. And I would say you have the obligation to vote. That's just my opinion about your obligation. But you do have that right. And that is a fact. So your right should be protected. So this whole thing about, um, you know, voter suppression is a bunch of garbage. And then to say that you got to have an ID to vote that somehow uh, voter suppression. I don't really get it. You got to have an ID to live. You got to have an ID for everything. Nobody complains about having an ID to get into the club, to go drink, get drunk, whatever. Uh, to go to the grocery store and buy cigarettes, alcohol, lottery tickets, maybe. You got to have an ID for a lot of different things. You got to have an ID or a license to drive. You got to have your ID for a lot of different things in society. It's not just, you know, we're, we're trying to suppress the vote. Nah, we're trying to protect the vote because think about it like this. You have the right to vote. You have your name. I'm Anthony Logan. Somebody comes into 
my voting area and they say, I'm Anthony Logan and I want to vote. No ID, no nothing. They can just go vote. Now, when I want to go vote, oh, I'm sorry, somebody already voted for you. What? And what about those that are deceased and people come in and vote as them? How is that fair? How is that right? Now, there's a study that came out and said there's no real evidence of, uh, you know, voter fraud. And this is a scare tactic by the right. But how do you really know that study is 100 percent accurate? And how can you really tell all the cases of voter fraud? Because the whole point is to not get caught. So how do you know that there's not a widespread thing going on? People were telling me that live in California that a lot of illegal immigrants are voting. They're openly trying to do it. I think in San Francisco talking about, oh, it's only for small local elections. Voting is voting. I don't care if it's for, uh, you know, dog catcher or the president. It's still voting. It's still the same process. So don't hand me this thing about, oh, it's a small election. We're not trying to get them to vote in a national election. So what? Local elections, small and large matter as does the national election. Actually, the local elections are more impactful as to what happens to you right where you live. The national one is important for federal matters, but your everyday, day-to-day life is mostly determined by your state. You know, if you have high state taxes, sales taxes, income, whatever it is, all that's going to be done by the state. You know, is it going to be a new sewage plant built right across the street from where you live? Those things are handled on the local level, not the federal level. So this whole thing about voter suppression is really a load of garbage. If anything, these guys that are out there with their guns from the new Black Panther Party could be considered doing some kind of voter suppression via voter intimidation. If you're out there with a sign, you know, vote Stacey Abrams. I don't know where you are. Are you outside of a polling place? I don't know what's going on. But if you're out there with your weapons... You got on your all black. You're part of the new Black Panther Party. That's intimidating to many. So you could be considered doing voter suppression yourself. Now, if you want the right to be able to have your guns, if you want the right to be able to protest how you feel, then you shouldn't be backing Stacey Abrams. That's going to be hilarious if she were to win, which I doubt. If she were to win, then these guys would not be able to do what they're doing. All right. She's going on TV talking about common sense gun co- common sense gun control will do nothing but hurt individuals like that. And I am guessing that at least one of these guys got a felony. So somebody might get locked up that's in that particular picture if they continue to do what they're doing, if not all of them because of the kind of guns that they have. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say. You know, the midterms are tomorrow, November the 6th, 2018. And you guys need to go out there and vote. Vote right. You know, I, I know that I probably shouldn't be saying vote left, vote right, be independent. But nah, go ahead and vote right. <laughs> I believe that's the best way to be. If you think that I'm wrong, hey, that's OK. It's fine. As long as you go out there and vote, I'm not going to be mad at you. I can just disagree with you on who you vote for. But I respect you for the fact that you went out there and voted because too many people in this country do not use their rights. They don't go vote. You need to vote to protect your rights. These guys in Georgia, hopefully they see this video and they understand who's really in their corner. If they sat down and talked to a Brian Kemp, they probably figure out that they have much more in common with him than they have not in common. So what do you think? Do you think that this whole kerfuffle over the picture illustrates ignorance? People just don't understand. You got there protesting in favor of Stacey Abrams against Brian Kemp because of this whole voter suppression thing. Meanwhile, you don't understand the avenues that were taken are to protect your vote are to protect your right to bear arms. The other person does not really want that. They want you to be able to go out there and vote as anybody. You could be a felon. You could be, you know, a a sexual predator whatever it is. You can go out there and vote and that's fine. But what they don't want you to have is your guns to protect yourself. All right. So when they want to do whatever they want to do, once they get in office, after you vote for them, you can't defend yourself against it. So how do you feel about that? I know I'm going to vote red 100 percent up here in Tennessee. I got Marsha Blackburn. I got Bill Lee. That's who I'm voting for. And everybody else that is in my particular area, my district, I'm voting for them. I'm going to vote the right way. 
Hopefully you do as well. But whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments.